So today I'm going to demonstrate the service you can perform on the top mount pulsar solenoid. I've got two solenoids here. One is uh, slightly disassembled and then one is intact just to show you. Um, the maintenance manual doesn't necessarily prescribe this procedure yet, um, but it's becoming a best practice that we're recommending our customers perform. The solenoid on the top mount pulsar is actually a little bit easier to uh, service. Um, there's really no specialty tools required for this, as opposed to the re retrievable pulsar, which requires uh, a more technical process. Um, the tools required for this uh, would be an O-rim pick with a uh, sort of a flat spade-like top, a T10 start handle uh, uh, Allen key, uh, and then a 764 uh, Allen, Allen key. The first thing you'd want to do is to remove the screws, uh, the four screws from the black cap. What that's going to allow you to do is to remove that cap. I've already done so on, on this partially disassembled one um, to speed up the video. So when you remove that, you can then gently work the cap off. You'll see a spring and then two posts, which will eventually be pulled out. The next thing you'd want to do is to remove the four screws at the base of the solenoid. Um, those are small and those would be removed using this T10 star handle, um, but those screws look like that. The larger Allen keys, the 76, uh, 74, uh, or sorry, 764 Allen key would be uh, these screws here. So when you remove the four bottom uh, uh, T10 uh, screws, and actually I should slow down. Um, once you remove that black cap, you can pull out the slug itself. So you want to gently do that. This is a very um, kind of heavy set of components, so you want to be careful when you're handling them. Wow. Sometimes these posts do come out with the cap. That's okay. You're going to end up pulling them out anyways. Right now, I can't grip them enough to pull out, so we'll get we'll get them removed once we pull the uh, the coil out. So to pull this cap off, I usually get a plastic um, O-ring pick, and I can just gently sort of work that off like so. And here it is. I'm going to keep this spring sort of safely out of the way. And then once you do that, you can then gently pull your coil out. And you can see those posts. And they're a little bit easier to remove once you pull the coil out. So now your solenoid is fully disassembled. That's what a complete one looks like. Uh, the next step would be cleaning the solenoid. And that's the important part. Um, when I pulled the coil out, there was an O-ring in here. I'll discuss that O-ring a, a little bit uh, in a moment. Um, but the best thing to do to clean these components is to just use isopropyl alcohol, um, maybe a, a clean paper towel, and then for some of the components we're going to use Scotch-Brite pads. Um, the cap itself, the best thing to do is to just spray that with isopropyl alcohol. You're going to spray the electrical uh, contacts with that. Uh, and then we actually, recommending, we actually recommend a little gentle compressed air. Once you're confident that's clean, you can set that aside. Um, another imponent, important component to clean is the slug. What you don't want is um, visible striations on the face of this slug. Um, those form uh, when there's debris or particulates uh, and, and grease sort of on that slug and it's the movement in and out of this body that causes those striations. So easy enough. You can just spray with isopropyl alcohol, a little scotch bright pad, and then you can work it kind of laterally back and forth to get rid of those striations. You also want to clean any grime or grease that you see in there. But simply doing this is usually enough to get those striations off. You can use a clean paper towel to then wipe it down and the remaining alcohol will dry off. Next would be to carefully spray your coil and contacts with alcohol. Um, if this tool, if this solenoid was mud invaded, uh, you would see dirt, debris, grime, drilling fluid, 
on the coil here very easily. There's some flow paths where this kind of is able to accumulate in particular, and you'd see that um, without question on your coil. That would affect um, how this coil functions, um, so it'd be very important to clean it. So I'm going to take the compressed air again. And gently dry it off. The remaining alcohol will then dry. Um, after that, you've got sort of the, ca uh, the, 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 the bottom piece in the body itself. This O-ring is a stack-up O-ring. It's not a sealing O-ring. So you just want to visibly inspect this for any damage. Um, if you don't see any damage, you don't have to replace it. And it would fit right down in there like so. Uh, this piece here can be cleaned with uh, alcohol, Scotch-Brite if you see any damage on the face, and then a clean paper towel. Uh, this one was fairly clean, so I'm just going to wipe it down. And actually, I'll pull the O-ring back out, and I'm going to get in there and make sure there's no debris or grease. Looks pretty clean. O-ring goes back in. It sits on that shelf. Uh, the cap here, um, or the bottom cap, again, can be just cleaned with some alcohol. Scotch-Brite pads to clean the face, and then a clean paper towel just to dry it off. Um, one note, um, be careful if you use compressed air on this. There are some plastic inserts here. I don't know if you can see right there and right there. Those would come out. So if you were to spray that, those plastic inserts would come out. Make sure your O-ring's in place. This guy here, again, back to this bottom cap, you can clean up. You'd want to clean the face in here. And then you can clean it with a paper towel or a little bit of compressed air again. Reassembling this is quite easy. You can take your posts and install them now if you'd like. Obviously these would want to be cleaned as well, any grime or grease. Uh, make sure that copper post is nice and shiny. And then all of these components usually clock together with guiding posts, so the, these uh, copper posts would slide in and then there's a pin that fits into that small hole inside of there. So you'd align it by eye and then try to work it in. And see as I'm doing that, my posts are pushing out, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove them. These plastic inserts slipped out, so now I'm just going to put the O-ring back in and then try to guide my coil back into the body. So when it clocks in, so right now it's flush with the, the body itself, when it clocks in, this will drop down a little bit further. There, just like that. Okay, so now you know you're in place and come around. And you can uh, put this cap back on. You want to align the cap hole with the holes on the body for the screws. We would then use Loctite, blue Loctite 246 on each of the screws. I'll just do one here. Hand tight. You would remain. You would finish the remaining three holes with the uh, screws in the Loctite. Next, you could slide your post back in. Just go all the way down into the coil, and they press in quite firmly. The slug itself would slide in, just like this. Um, you can put a little jet lube on here to ensure that it's going to slide in nicely, but usually slides in just like that. Your small spring would then fit right on top. And then the cap fits on top, that black cap. So there's some alignment posts and then these pins here. So you'd want to just kind of eyeball it. That looks like it'd be right. And gently, you want the posts, the spring, and the alignment posts to all line up and seat into place here. 
just like that. Then this screw here, you've got four of them. You're gonna wanna put a little Loctite on it, and then you would go ahead and insert all four screws, hand tight with the Loctite. Now, per the manual, there are some solenoid tests you can perform. I'd recommend servicing. I'd recommend doing those tests, servicing it, and then doing the tests again. Finish with the following screws, and then your solenoid is complete again. Um, gently, with a firm grip, you can actually j shake it and make sure that or that slug is moving, uh, and we see that it is. There's a spring in there that's kind of helping that balance back and forth. So we know that the solenoid moves freely, or the, the slug moves freely inside the coil, um, and it's now ready to test.